Well, good morning, students. It's September 11th. Very dark day for your professor and for a lot of people. Today we're going to look back at how I and other journalists covered that important event in Milestone before you were born. And also how reporters cover war, because 9-11 was the start of a war. We're going to look at the early days as well as modern warfare and how correspondents cover it. So on this day in 9-11, it was just September 11 back then, in 2001, I was the morning show producer at a TV station in New York City. I had just worked all night. I was teaching a writer how to do what we called a cut-in. A cut-in is when the local station interrupts the network at a predetermined time to do a little update, like a brief, on local news, traffic, and weather. Well, just a few feet away from where I was training this writer, a woman gets on the phone and was talking to someone, and she says, a plane hit the World Trade Center? What are you talking about? And the writer says to me, I think you better take this one. He got up, I sat down, I typed, we have breaking news, a plane has struck the World Trade Center, and that's when I hit print, and I ran to the studio and handed a script to the control room people and the anchors and went in the control room and told the director, let's get on the air. Now, again, I told you, a cut-in is at a predetermined time. The network was still on. But I said, let's go now, something that is never, ever done. And we did. So... Um, I'm going to direct you to, in Blackboard, a video that you can watch. It's a recording of our interruption at 8.50 a.m. on September 11, 2001, four minutes after the first plane hit the North Tower. Just watch a few minutes of this. You don't have to spend your whole day watching. So, next. I want to show you how neighbors, other people in the TV uh, business, covered September 11th. I had interned many years ago when I was a college student and also later worked years after September 11th at another TV station. It's WABC, Channel 7. And they put together this video about how they covered it. Now, it's more than 50 minutes long. I'm only going to ask you to watch as much as you can. If you can watch up to 44 minutes, that's a good stop time. But again, it's long and it's harrowing, harrowing and, and scary, and maybe you don't want to watch that much. But watch as much as you can up to 44 minutes, and that link is also in Blackboard. So when that's done... I want you to consider that since the days of the Revolutionary War, journalists have been writing about conflicts and battles. I put a link to an article in Blackboard for after the second video to tell you about the history of journalism in wars from the Revolutionary War up to Vietnam. In our modern era, CNN really changed how war is covered in 1991 when journalists were inside the country that the U.S. started attacking after Iraq invaded Kuwait. They bombed the city of Baghdad with reporters on the phone telling America and the world what it was like being bombed. Now, this had happened in World War II with radio, Edward R. Murrow, but this was on television. And then 20 years ago, when another U.S. president named Bush invaded Iraq. Again, CNN and other networks televised it live. So there's an article here about um, the first Gulf War and another article in Blackboard about the second Gulf War. Both presidents named Bush, George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush, his son. So lastly, I want to just give you a tour basically of what's happening in Ukraine. It's 19 months since the uh, Russians invaded. And believe it or not, a lot of the correspondents 
who are covering the war are women. So I've got four links in this blackboard. Four links for you to take a look at. Pick one. One's about a guy, he went there to uh, be part of the Peace Corps, and then he became a journalist and he wrote a book. The other two articles are about um, women who are war correspondents. And the last is an article by me about a transgender war correspondent. And what's interesting about her is after I wrote the story, she was so motivated by what was happening in Ukraine, she quit journalism and became a soldier for the Ukraine army. And now she's their like spokesperson after being wounded. So anyway, those are the four links. Pick one. We'll discuss them when we meet again. I appreciate your patience today. Uh, I'm getting up early in the morning to go to work. And uh, it's not supposed to be during the day. It's supposed to be in the afternoon and evening. But first day, you know, fill out paperwork, all that kind of stuff. So um, I've got some videos. I've got some links. And there's homework and assignments for you to uh, actually read chapter two, read chapter two, page 20 to 41, it's 20, 21 pages. And come to class on Wednesday in person, where we'll talk about what you read, we'll talk about what you thought of the war correspondence in Ukraine, and we'll read obituaries. If you haven't asked for an extension, it might be too late. You can try. Send me an email if you need one. Some of you have already done so and you've gotten extensions, but they're due Tuesday at midnight. And those of you who haven't asked, they'll be marked late. Ooh, don't want that, right? So shoot me an email. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. I'm sorry I can't be there. And I'll see you Wednesday. Take care.